Greetings, everybody. This is Morning Eggnog. My name is James Font. With me, as always, Caleb Font. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, Caleb, you were telling me a story, and then I cut you off right when you were talking yeah, about it. Yeah, because you're rude. I am very rude. He's rude. So rude. But he, the reason he is rude is he wanted to bring it to you all, because who doesn't enjoy a good uh, early morning story? So I wake up at 5 in the morning. Because well, he's a disgusting the, old man. I am. Actually, it was like 4.15. I, I woke, woke up, up at 4.45 today. So Yeah, I know. We're all gross. Gosh dang it. So I woke up, and I'm like, oh, it's 4.15. I don't have to get up till 5. That's 45 minutes of sleep. So yeah. I lay back down, and I'm resting, and pretty soon I'm just... Just right in there, and it's only thump in the back of my head. I'm like, what the heck? And there's a pillow. Somebody hit me in the back of the head with my pillow. At 4.15 in the morning? Oh, uh, it was more like 4.30 at that 4:30 point. 4.30 in the morning? But it was one of my daughters. She oh. wanted to come sleep with us. <laughs> she hits me in the back of the head, and I turn and look at her. She's just sitting at the end of our bed just staring at me. Not it's, moving. It's better than if you would have woken up and she's just standing over you. Oh, yeah, I guess. At <laughs> least she gave me a warning by hitting me in the head with the pillow. Oh, I'm awake now. Oh, my child is not a demon. <laughs> so that was my morning uh, this morning was my daughter waking me up at 430 with a pillow to the back of the head because she I, wanted to come sleep with us. I just hit snooze like twice and then finally got up. My wife had to go to work today at I saw that. five. 35, 5, 6 o'clock, whatever. I saw the tire marks leaving. Yep, something like that. So, Caleb. Yes. What Do you remember your first roadkill? Oh, my first roadkill? No. But I do remember uh, I was in the S10, uh, the old truck. I was going down the road, and there was something in the road. I'm like, what is that? And it was a dead deer in the middle of the road. And... It was lined up perfectly, so I actually drove over the top of the dead deer without hitting my without hurting my car. And it didn't car. rip out like the transmission, it, and it exactly, didn't bend your axle as it hit something. Exactly, I I perfectly lined it up so that way I went right over top of the deer with my truck, and I was like, "Hmm, I'm really glad I wasn't in a car because <laughs> <laughs> I would not have had a front end." Nope, because it would just looked like a pot. You know, it kind of looked like the way it was laying. It looked like a raccoon, but then when you got closer, it's like. Crap, that's a deer. That's and it, a really big dog. And I was young at the time, so I didn't know how to drive as well as I do now. Yes, so, yes, yes. Anyways, yes. that I actually do remember my first road kill. It was, I had just gotten my permit. I was 15 and a half years old. My dad took me driving. And all I was expecting to do was go into the church parking lot and like park and stuff and maybe drive around the parking lot. So yeah, I parked a practice. One, I parked once and now I was like, all right, that's good. Let's go. So we went on back roads and... It was, it's nighttime, so I have my lights on. Everything's it's we're on back roads in the middle of Northwest Ohio, so there's nobody on the roads. And I hit a rabbit. Okay, that was my first, and I vividly remember hitting a rabbit. My first night ever driving, I hit something. Oh, I mean that does happen. And then another time I remember roadkill is my sister uh, hit a fox. She's hit a lot of things. She's hit a lot of things, including mailboxes. <laughs> Signposts. <laughs> <laughs> she she crumpled like a candy wrapper, a a turning sign, <laughs> and tore out the bottom of the car. <laughs> we finally put that car. No, the mom and dad still have that car. Is that the white one? The yeah, Buick? The white one. The white Buick? No, it wasn't a Buick. It was a, a Oldsmobile. Oh, the Oldsmobile. Is that joined the, the graveyard in the back? It, I think it has. No, we got rid of that one, and then we have a blue one that we bought from somebody. Oh, that's right, that you were trying to part out. You were Which we part- did. Uh, we didn't realize my tires were threadbare <laughs> until then. Ah, oh, gotcha. Woohoo. So the reason I asked about roadkill, it's just a weird coincidence. The weirdest roadkill ever, a guy in Kansas hit a blank. A oh. guy in Kansas who might have the weirdest roadkill story ever after hitting a fish. <laughs> in Kansas. A large bird clipped the front of his truck and flew off. Then he got home and found a 12-inch bass stuck to his grill. <laughs> Apparently, the bird <laughs> had it in its talons. That is awesome. And then there's a there's a picture. <laughs> the fish is, like, inside his grill. It's pretty sweet. That's, uh, that's pretty for, funny. For you YouTubers out there that enjoy our uh, green screen. A, a barber... A barber? County man has a story to tell after he hit a fish on his way home to Harder Hardener. What is what is up with these county names? What is it? Hard Hardener. So he lives in Hardener. Barber County and he lives in Hardener Town. Well, actually, the fish hit him. <laughs> <laughs> the William uh, was driving. 
to Hardner's short cutoff on Highway 281 when he saw a hawk flying and carrying something in his claws. I'm trying to think of where that's at, and I don't know, because I used to live in Kansas, but that is not clear to me where that's at. I, But, yeah, that's just... Kansas is actually a really big state. So what's the weirdest thing you've ever hit? Leave a comment down, 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 just down, or leave a comment, or yeah. just or just send us a, an email. Yeah, if you got a picture of it, we always enjoy pictures of roadkill. <laughs> that sounds a little demented, but you're not wrong. <laughs> so fun fact, <laughs> my mom and I used to, go, or my mom, every day we'd go on a walk. We'd go to the mail, and then we'd, we lived in a small town. Yeah. And we go on a walk, and we go on this country road, uh, uh, county line. The, oh, yes, the, county line, of course. And the, where all the drug deals probably happened. Most likely. The ones and, that pull into the cornfield and then pull out of the cornfield. Yeah. That's when, in Ohio. That was, a, that was a weird... One time I was, we were walking... I think it was when we were shooting the Pokemon Go video. Oh, possibly. Didn't we come across somebody doing something weird? Um, no, it wasn't. It was just Sam Silas and I doing something. Okay. And people were doing something weird. It was a bend in the road, and they got in their car and left really quick. And we were like, well, we might get shot. Mm, yeah. Anyways, so my mom and I would go on walks every day to to go on walks. I don't know. I was homeschooled. Your mom went for exercise. You just went along because... I wasn't allowed to be at home because I was like seven. Okay. Anyways. Or younger or older. I don't know. Anyways, the point of the story is we... <laughs> since we went on walks every day, we would, we would track the decomposition of this dead dog <laughs> for school. <laughs> Oh, homeschooling. <laughs> Change anything into, into learning. Biology. Here we go. But it was, <coughs> it was pretty fascinating. What, what stage is the dog at Because right we we found it when it was dead. Like it had just died like a, maybe a day or two. <laughs> and then the next day it was bloated. And then the next day it had popped and there were maggots all over it. <laughs> and then it, we watched it get eaten James, every, James, every day. James, James, there's people throwing up right now no, all over the it's place. okay. There's people that have, you know, non-font stomachs. Uh, did you know maggots are still used today to eat away dead flesh if you have something infected, like with gangrene or something? Mm, I know that they still use leeches. I'm pretty sure they still use maggots. You sit in the sun and you have maggots eat away your stuff. It I, saved a guy's leg. I think we might have read about it on this podcast. <laughs> Maybe this podcast is lava. I don't know. I don't remember talking about maggots eating people. Anyways, but if you have like a gangrenous <laughs> leg, <laughs> you just put a bunch of maggots on it and then it'll eat it off. Oh, goody. Who just, All right, now let's change the you, subject. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to go find me some maggots. I, could, I couldn't be a doctor. <laughs> no. I probably could. I couldn't. I probably could, but I don't want to. I, I personally don't wouldn't want the, what is it, eight to 16 years of schooling? Yeah, if you started now, you'd be, like, super old. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would almost be pointless at this point in time. <laughs> well, in the... Anyways, anyways, Caleb, subject change. Subject change into what? Whatever you have. Oh, okay, we're moving into me. Okay, so I was looking up... Uh, my wife and I are going to go skiing with the family. It's really in exciting. Colorado, at Breckenridge. We're super excited about this. Are you doing this. a weekend or just a week? Uh, we're doing... Basically, the way it is is we get there Wednesday... Okay. Uh, and then we start skiing Friday. We ski Friday, Saturday because we have to drive from Denver. So we get to ski Friday, Saturday, and then we're driving back to Kansas, hang out with the family for a little while. Then we'll fly out of Kansas. Oh, that's cool. So that's what that's what's going. But yeah, we get to spend basically three to four days in Colorado. That's super fun. In March, it's going to be gorgeous. I'm super excited. So I was kind of looking around. I was like, it's been a while since I brought us an extreme sport. So uh, I it thought, has been. It's been a while. So I was like, all right, it's time for another extreme sport. So who doesn't like cycling or mountain biking? People without legs. People without legs. So bicycling or mountain biking. Or people who just don't like cycling. But I love cycling. I used to bike 12 miles um, at least once a week to see a girlfriend because I didn't have my driver's license yet. Yeah. And then you would have to bike back. Yeah. Or did you get rides back? Oh, no. I biked back. I would bike a lot. (laughs) I biked. I biked so much. Yeah. I tried riding with James and I just couldn't because he was ridiculously fit at that point in time for Ah, cycling. Now I'm fat. In comparison to 16-year-old James. Shut up, James. Not 16-year-old James. shut up. Nobody cares about your fat. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not in the shape of the good old days. Uh, (laughs) I'm not a teenager anymore. Uh, This sucks. I can't fit an extra, extra small anymore. (laughs) Extra, extra small. Shirts. 
extra, extra small. I never wore an extra, extra small. I'm pretty sure my three or four year old could fit in an extra, extra. Anyways. Probably. All right. So downhill cycling, bicycle, you know, mountain okay. hiking. So still, you've heard of that, Still right? on track. Yeah, still on okay. track. Have you ever seen the videos where they have a GoPro on their helmet and they're riding around? You think they're going to die at every turn? I know. It looks ridiculous. How fast they go yeah. and, and how they do not die. You trust yourself a lot. Is amazing. But they decided to kick it up. How do you kick it up? (laughs) Just wait. Oh, no. A two-day downhill race. Two-day downhill race. How do you poop? You probably stop and dump it and go. They have backpacks, so they probably haul toilet paper. Wait. Anyways, keep talking. (laughs) Two-hill day race. A two-day downhill mountain race. (laughs) Okay. Uh, to bring together amateurs and professionals with one major aim to get there first. Amateurs, they're going to die. Yeah. Uh, a real MTB derby starting from Les Two Alps Glacier with a 2,500-meter uh, 2, fi- descent Dude. and a distance of 25 kilometers. So, Dude, 25 I mean, almost over miles. Over snow, ice, what? shingle rocks. What? Each year, the route changes a little bit to, to make it harder. All right. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. The final on Sunday is the highlight of the event. Departure from the glacier is at 3,400 meters. And then the downhill, literally like a ski slope. What? That is an incredible- 700 700- and the downhill is snow to 900 meters. So it's an incredible 250 meter altitude difference. So it's like, what angle is that? Like a 70 degree angle? Uh, we're talking like probably black diamond. On a bike. On a bike. With 700 other cyclists. If you fall <laughs> off, you are 100% paralyzed it's, or dead. It's so awesome. Because <laughs> they get to this point. Uh, there's there's videos. Oh and my you, goodness! Yeah, you have to watch the videos. They are absolutely incredible. Uh, I'll give you the post. Um, but, oh my goodness! So 700 people go down this hill, and it gets to this point where it pinches down and makes a turn. Oh, the carnage is incredible. My wife and I watched it yesterday. We we're pretty sure we saw some shoes and helmets flying. It was quite entertaining. But the people still got up. And got back on their it's bikes. Like, it's like watching the original A Team TV show. <laughs> like, yeah, basically. Like, they'd, they'd, like how they'd are you flip still a truck alive? and it explode, and then they'd like get out of the car. Exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, I, so you heard of extreme sports? Yeah. Now so, let's go to extreme extremes. So this is called the Mountain of Hell. I mean, it makes is sense. Is what the trip it was. What this is called. Um, and I've watched multiple videos. All these guys usually have GoPros on their helmets, which is. Uh, terrifying terrifying and awesome to watch um but it is yeah if you watch some of the guys you might if you depending on if you're language sensitive goodness you might you might want to mute it because i'd be i don't know what i'd be saying (laughs) going down a they say some pretty they say some pretty stout stuff (laughs) gosh darn it dang yeah. Heckin' frick. That's right. All the homeschool words that they they use. Ah, son of a Bendigo. <laughs> Shadrach. Her Bolshevik. That was close. <laughs> oh, we love you. <laughs> Anyways, so Do you have do you, do you have any What if it was four wheelers? Would you do it? No. If maybe okay, a if snowmobile. You did, if you weren't married, didn't have kids, would you do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have this thing called common sense <laughs> and a will to live and a will to live. <laughs> Cause I started watching these videos as the like near death experiences on YouTube. It freaked me out. Uh, there's a, there's a video of a guy cliff, di- cliff diving. Oh gosh. Yeah. And, and he's wearing a GoPro and it's, I forget what it's called. It's a trend on, it was a trend on either vine or TikTok or, musically or one of the anyway, whatever things. this guy cliff dives and he's like it looks like gonna he's gonna hit the rocks and then it stops right before he hits the water and goes to be continued yeah of course but he but then there's then you can watch the full video and he, he totally makes it and it's but by like this much yeah. and he could have died and it's scary and i don't like near-death experience videos yeah like or the, the construction accident videos those are just terrifying oh gosh yeah i was watching one where uh, a guy um, he was flying 
uh, parachute and it got hit by birds and then oh, the bird geez. got tangled up. And oh no. So he's like yelling at the bird who's still alive. <laughs> you stupid bird. <laughs> Pre- get out of here. No. Cause so he's trying to throw his second shoot um, and everything and they get to the finally they make it to the ground and he's looking at the bird going you are a jerk. <laughs> It's really quite funny. You're a jerk, Pidgey. All right. So we talked about downhill. Uh, biking. Biking and snow. Cycling. So and I was curious, what is the fastest time clocked going downhill in snow on a bicycle, which somebody has done? All right. So. Do you have chain tires or like, how do you no, get any traction? It, it's the way the bike, uh, the tires are really oddly designed, but they're. Okay. They so they work. are special tires. All right, so Eric Barone, who is a, I believe he's a Frenchman, uh, tw- the April twenty, April twenty first, two thousand, the fastest ever speed attained cycling downhill on snow or ice is two hundred and twenty two kilometers, which is equals out to about one hundred and thirty eight oh! miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, faster than I have driven in a car. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your fastest speed on a bike, Caleb? Because you had one of those little things that gauged how fast you went. Thirty-two, I think. 32, and that was well, you felt like you were flying, flying like downhill, thirty-two miles an hour. You're like, wow, this I is think really I'm fast. Like, I was like, I'm going fast, <laughs> Mama, I'm going fast. One hundred and thirty-eight miles per hour for us American people. Yeah, on snow, on snow, people. It's crazy. It was. Yeah, I'll give send you the link so that way we can that way you can watch it. The helmet he puts on is epic. I want one. Does it have like a neck brace and everything? No, it's just like it basically it's like oh a helmet. My so gosh. so he puts on the helmet, but then he puts on like this plastic trash can that like sits over top of his shoulders for aerodynamics. So he can go faster. And then his suit that he's in, it's like red and super tight, but he's got like layers and layers of protected padding. So he's like walking like this to get to his bike. <sighs> Wow, that would be exciting. Yeah. I thought I liked bike riding, but not that much. Good lord. Yeah, next will be unicycling in snow. I, I should have looked that up. Why didn't I look that up? I'll see if I can find something for you guys with that one. That would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to imagine going down. I mean, yeah, no. I can't imagine going down that hill. Miles. I imagine. In snow, it probably feels safer because if you hit snow, it's you... packed snow though. That's true. It like, would hurt because I was. It doesn't I was, matter. I was it would hurt. I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, Joe Rogan! And he was talking about how he was skiing, and this lady like didn't know what she was doing, and like accidentally skied in front of him. Mm-hmm. And so to avoid hitting her, he like did some. He did a maneuver where he stopped, but he fell on the back of his head and hit his head on the hard packed ice. Yeah. He's like, I'm pretty sure I messed up something real bad. Yeah, that's why I'm being, I'm getting a helmet. I don't blame you. Yeah, we're getting helmets. Uh, yeah, because there's actually rules and regulations to skiing that I found out. That people are like, you make sure you look at the rules of the mountain. And, and you like, go, what? I'm like, rules of the mountain. So I looked them up. Yeah, one of them is, is the guy in front of you has the right of way. So you have to be, you know, always be, because they can't see you coming. No. So You're going probably... You're going 10 miles an hour. Oh, you're probably going faster than that. I know. I'm just talking about how fast I would be going. That's why I've got an app. I actually download an app. There's a really cool app if you're a skier or snowboarder that you can get if you have an iPhone, which I have for work now. So I have an iPhone. Anyways, I was going to say, like, I really don't like iPhone. But anyways, it's besides the point. It's okay. Don't get... Shut up, Caleb. It'll actually track uh, your distance, your speeds. Um, it'll track... Uh, it'll actually huh. show you where you're at on the mountain. It'll also show you other people who have that app. Um, That's cool. Yeah. I'm, so it's kind of like Google Maps. It's basically... I have Google Maps, too, because I'm like, you know, that one's might be easier to use, too. But you can actually see where your friends are at. So if you get split up, you can actually find them because Breckenridge has three mountains. Oh, dang. So, yeah. It's Breckenridge. Big. Breckenridge. Um, the only thing about skiing that I've ever learned was from South Park where they, <laughs> they're teaching them to, to ski and it's pizza slice, French fry. If you want to go fast, you go French fry. So you put your skis side by oh. side, but if you want to slow down, you pizza slice. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what this was. If you need, if you want to go V, do the split. It's called ankle break. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Caleb. Yes. 
You were. Right. Why do I always say that? You're like Caleb. Yes. That's, you were. That's my thing. You were uh, very reckless in high school. I bet. Right. No. You you probably got kicked out of a lot of stores. Right. No. Are you sure? Yes. Positive. Positive. Well, according to this, unless post, you found some evidence that I don't know about. No, nothing about you. So according to this post, so who knows if it's true or not, I'm going to read through a list of things that got this guy almost banned. Well, let's just pretend it's true because if it is, I mean, it's almost hard enough. That if somebody had was this creative to write this. People have made the, people made the Avengers and Spider-Man. Yeah, but this is, this is like different. <clears throat> Anyways, go ahead. A woman's husband got banned from Walmart. The reasons why are brilliant. <laughs> this is a letter from the Walmart branch to Mrs. Green. Dear Mrs. Green, over the past six months, your husband, Rice, Royce, Royce, has been causing quite a commotion at our Lawtown store. Lawton, Lawton store. We cannot tolerate this behavior type and, as a result, will ban your entire family from shopping at any of our wow. other stores <laughs> if even one more incident occurs. We have documented all incidents on our video surveillance equipment. Three of the clerks are currently attending counseling sessions from the trouble <laughs> your husband has caused. All complaints against Mr. Green have been compiled and listed below. Mr. Wally Brown, company department. Memo, are Mrs. Green complaints. Mr. Green complaints. Mr. Green. Now, on November 15th, 2013, Mr. Green took out 24 boxes of condoms and randomly put them in people's carts when they were not looking. <laughs> On November 23rd, 2013, <laughs> set all the alarm clocks in the warehouse to go off at five-minute intervals. <laughs> December 10th, 2013, made a trail of tomato juice on the floor leading to the restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> December 23rd, 2013, walked up to an employee and told her in the official tone, code three in the warehouse, and watched what happened. <laughs> on January 10th, almost a month later, on 2014, went to the service desk and asked if, to put a bag of M&Ms in layaway. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> On January 23rd, 2014, moved a caution wet floor sign to the carpeted area. Like that one didn't... It, it's not that bad. On February 15th, 2014, set up a tent in the camping department and told <laughs> other shoppers he'd invite them in <laughs> if they'd bring pillows from the bedding department. On March 5th, 2014, oh when a clerk goodness. asked if she could help him, he threw himself on the floor, began to cry, and wailed, Why can't people just leave me alone? On March 26th, 2014... He looked right into the security camera and used it as a mirror and picked his nose. <laughs> On April 2nd, 2014, while handling guns in the hunting department, asked the clerk if he knows <laughs> where the antidepressants are. <laughs> That's just bad. That is me. Could you imagine that guy behind the counter? Like, Do you know where the antidepressants are? <laughs> <clears throat> I need a bigger one. <laughs> On April 15th, 2014, darted around the store looking around suspiciously while loudly humming a Mission Impossible theme song. I love that. I, I, actually, I absolutely love that. I want to do that. Except I would put it on my, I don't know, humming, it's like either have it on your phone or humming it. I'm like, humming it would be better, but seeing that would be hilarious. The next one is... Uh, <laughs> on April 26, 2014, in the auto department, practicing his quote-unquote Madonna look using different size funnels. <laughs> oh, my. On May 1, 2014, he hid in a clothing rack and when people browsed through, yelled, Pick me! Pick me! <laughs> on July 12th. You imagine? Yeah, you're just like... First of all, you're at Walmart looking for clothes. So your standards aren't very high. So you're looking. <laughs> wow. You got to go at least Target. I get jeans from Walmart. I'm making fun of you, Caleb. Oh, my goodness. Have a. That was actually kind of cool. <laughs> How'd you do that? I, I was completely by I thought on you purpose. bought exclusively ballroom jeans from whatever that company is. I can't no, remember. I can't afford ballroom jeans. You can't afford $60 jeans, from jeans no, all the time? I can't. 
Caleb, we, come we on, talked get with about it. of our expensive jeans. I can't afford hardly afford Duluth, let alone whatever else we had. Walmart. Anyways, but yeah, if you're just you're sifting through their clothes, could you imagine doing it at Goodwill? What? <laughs> Hiding in the racks and yelling, "Pick me!" Oh, the thing is, they're not designed. They're like not the circle ones. Yeah, they're not. If they're the circle ones, that's where you. And then the last two. Oh gosh, yeah. When announced on July twenty, on July twelfth, twenty fourteen, when announced. When an announcement came over the loudspeaker, he assumed the fatal posi- fetal position the fa- in s- the fatal <laughs> the, the fetal, fetal position the fetal <laughs> position and screamed, "No, no, Sheila, it's those voices again!" <laughs> and last but certainly not least, just today, September sixteenth, two thousand fourteen, went into the fitting room, shut the door, and waited a while, then yelled very loudly. Hey, somebody, I need some toilet paper in here. (laughs) Wow. So I don't think I have the tenacity to do any of those things in a Walmart uh, or any other store, particularly Walmart, though. Although I feel like it would be the fact that there there is 15 different, quote unquote, cases uh, shows how tolerant Walmart is. Well, I mean, if you look at people of Walmart, you, you can already tell that they're pretty tolerant. Yeah. Olivia and I have been watching a TV show called uh, Superstore. Okay. And it's about a, a superstore. And so, like, they'll have little, in, they'll have obviously different stories of what's going on throughout the day. One of the B roll <laughs> shots is this lady standing in line to get coffee, and the guy in front of her is drinking out of the milk container. <laughs> <laughs> and then he puts it down, wipes his face, and then walks away. Another one is oh, a lady who, it's its a B-roll shot, and she smells a candle. And then she takes a huge bite out of it. <laughs> and oh, then my. puts it back on the shelf. <laughs> I, I kudo people who work there. I couldn't imagine dealing with people every day. I deal with people every day, but not to that extent. Yeah, not that level of people. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you are interested in a coaster or a sticker, be sure to message us on Facebook, Instagram, or email us at morningeggnog at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram to know what's going on and to ask suggestions. If you have green screen suggestions, uh, let us know. Yeah, we always... We'll put it up on the back. We like comments. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, You can... Listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. And you can watch us here on YouTube Mm -hmm. at James Fox Podcast. Yep. You're very helpful, Gil. I know. I'm super helpful. (laughs) (laughs) Have a wonderful morning, you wonderful night. See ya. I love this. It's very green. Here, I'll have to show you what we're doing for... Oh, we need to take a picture. I keep forgetting to take a picture every time we do the podcast. (laughs)